I recently installed a version 3 hybrid MOSFET from Perrin in my Elite Force MP5K. Now that one took a little bit of work, some soldering and such, not a big deal, but for someone who has a little less experience, it can be actually a lot of work and it can be kind of a daunting task. When I opened up their version 2 hybrid MOSFET, I was kind of amazed that there was no soldering, no measuring, no nothing required. It was all set up, ready to go, pre-soldered, pre-measured, everything. I just need to drop it in, close everything up and program it. This is a really great MOSFET. I'm looking forward to installing it today. The version two hybrid MOSFET, of course, comes with everything you need to get it set up. Uh, let me dig through the little box here. You get this little like 3D printed kind of trigger insert. It kind of latches on and then screws on to some extent to the trigger and it holds a little magnet, which is why they call it the hybrid system. You've got your optical sensor for the selector and a little magnet for the trigger. On top of that, you've got your little playing card here. It's kind of a cheat sheet. It shows you all the settings and all the options for programming and how to quickly get into your different programming modes. You also get a little sticker booklet here. It's partially if for install, partially for a cool factor. The stickers here are for the selector plate, so you do need those. It comes with your standard ones and your ICS specific selector plates, which I kind of like. Uh, I did some work on an ICS MP5 recently with a different MOSFET, and that one took a little bit of kind of guess and check with where to put the sticker on the selector for that one. So that's a, this is a really nice touch. I like that. It also has kind of your, your fun factor stickers, all your parent stickers, and your debug uh, error option stickers here. You can put these on uh, pretty much anything. Your, your gun case, uh, whatever, just as a quick reminder of if you have any issues with it or all your programming options as well. In addition, the little fold-out packet here comes with a QR code. This is for your instruction manual. Definitely read the instructions. It's a rather in-depth, really well-written 13-page PDF online. You definitely need to read it for the install. Lastly, the version 2 hybrid MOSFET from Parent itself. It's pretty tiny. All the wiring is pre-done for you. It is also wired to a Deans connector, which is great. All my batteries are Deans because it's the best connector. We all know that. And it's all set to go. You just basically need to drop it in your gun, make sure it all fits correctly, of course and close it all up. So it should be a pretty simple, pretty quick install and I don't foresee any problems. So let's go ahead and go to the tech table. I'm going to install this in my SIMA or EMG, a Vietnam era M16 or the M16A1, I suppose. I've had this gun for a little while. I've done a little bit of work on it. And I did a video on it several months ago when I picked it up, which is a pretty in-depth video. So I'm going to be removing the stock MOSFET that's in that gun, which is just a little uh, little micro switch. It's a really basic MOSFET, no programming, just to protect uh, your circuit essentially. I'm going to be installing this with a lot more options and functionality. Before I start talking about my install on this particular MOSFET, I do want to talk about the gun I'm installing it in. I did a video on this SIMA M16 or EMG M16, whichever you really want to call it. It is OEM by SIMA. Uh, I did the review quite a few months ago. Gosh, I don't even remember when. It's been a little bit. But I had some reservations and some pretty strong opinions about the internals of the gun because of their kind of high speed take on a longer barreled gun that I wouldn't think would be the best route to go with a platform like this. So that gun, this thing, has the just the basic SIMA MOSFET in there. It replaces the standard trigger unit. It's got a little, little micro switch there. Uh, I'm not sure how durable these are. I've been fine with mine so far, but again, I also haven't used it a whole lot. Uh, so we're going to be taking this out and essentially just dropping in the new Perrin hybrid MOSFET. Now, some other things I've done with this particular gun, it did have uh, gears that came with that are, I'm pretty sure, OEM by SHS. Um, and they were they were good, but they were short strokes. I think it's like three or four teeth or so, which just seemed a little odd for a long barrel gun like this. The, the voluming of the cylinder really did not work out. So I've got some G and G, uh, just stock gears. I think I got out of a combat machine a while ago. They're great gears. Uh, I've put those in there with some solid eight millimeter Lonex bushings um, because the ones that came in here, the bearings, I've seen those break or just bust, and I'm that's not something I really want to happen on this gun very very soon. And on top of that, the uh, cylinder piston head it came with, uh, it was okay, but it was it just it had some issues. So I went ahead and replaced that with a uh, Lonex silent piston head, which actually uh, corrects the angle of engagement really really nicely because it's thicker. And I went ahead and shaved down 
two teeth or about a tooth and a half actually on this piston. So everything mechanically works great. The compression's really good. So far this has been a really solid gun and I just want to improve it a little bit, actually a lot, by installing the new pair inversion to hybrid MOSFET in here. So let's go ahead and drop that in. First of all, after opening up the gearbox and kind of gutting it and just removing everything necessary, I went ahead and installed the little uh, clamp that sits on the trigger here. Now, I wasn't sure how this installed offhand, and I realized I actually have to take the two pieces apart. It's a little 3D printed uh, unit here. And it basically just clamps on, so it's pretty tight. It doesn't wiggle around at all, and it sits rather nicely on there. It also holds the magnet here on the left side of it uh, for the hybrid system. So I also screwed the screw down just a little bit there just to make sure it's tight to the top of the trigger there. It wasn't too tough to install, it just took a few seconds and it sits rather nicely on the top of the trigger there. I've gone ahead and placed the sticker on there for the standard selector. Since this isn't an ICS one, I'm not gonna use the ICS specific uh, stickers they provide. Uh, you can see it's just a little bit to the right there. I'm not sure if this is going to be exactly right. I've had some uh, an interesting time lately with a number of MOSFETs trying to place different stickers, so this will be a trial and error process, as it always is. Every gearbox is going to be a little bit different. This particular Simon gearbox, I did have to grind down this second peg here. It fits fine with the original MOSFET, but unfortunately the parent MOSFET does not allow for that, so it had to go. This particular gearbox is rather nice. I do like it a lot, even though it has some kind of proprietary elements as far as the springs guide system goes. The trench right here has a little kind of hook that you can put the wiring under, and it makes it really, really convenient. Ugh, that'll stay in the trench there. Uh, for keeping, gosh, nothing wants to stay in the trenches. <laughs> for keeping the wiring under the motor shaft there. Uh, the trenches in this are a little tight, especially for this wiring, uh, but I do like how flexible this wiring is on the, uh, the hybrid MOSFET here. It is really rather convenient. All right, I've got the hybrid MOSFET, the version 2 from Perrin installed. And I'll tell you, I had some weird, weird finicky stuff. It wasn't with the MOSFET at all. It was 100% with this particular airsoft gun. I really love Saima as an airsoft gun company, but I tell you, I wish they'd keep things simpler sometimes because... It, ah, it's just a pain. Airsoft guns are always interesting to work on, and I tell you, there's always a new problem that creeps up in random guns. When I would put this on uh, semi or full auto, the trigger would be totally locked up, and what was going on is the mechanical safety. The screw for it was pushing against the inside of the body for some strange reason, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, when it would go off of safe, it would just lock the trigger. It wouldn't move at all because there was so much pressure on it. And when I would just tap the gearbox slightly, it would unlock. And it was just like, oh, what the heck is going on? So that was something I had to overcome. I just ended up removing it because when this particular MOSFET's on safe, it doesn't fire anyway. So I've still got my safety preserved there. The second issue I had was with the sticker. I left the little metal insert on the selector plate and just put it on that. I thought it'd be all right. What ended up happening is there was so much pressure between the gearbox and the metal insert here that the sticker, after about three or four times of going between semi and full auto, just tore off, which was like, uh, what's going on? It, it wouldn't, uh, it was only reading full auto and then it would randomly read safe. It was being really, really finicky. And it was just, the sticker came off. So I ended up removing the uh, metal uh, plate there and just put a sticker on the selector plate itself. That way there's no friction there to rub it off and There's plenty of clearance. So just lots of little things ended up happening that took a couple of hours to get this installed because I had to disassemble it a couple of times and reassemble it actually more than a few like five or six times just for random things that kept cropping up. So it was an interesting install but finally uh, it's all installed. I tested it. It's working and it sounds really really nice. So let's go ahead and walk through the programming steps here. Let's program semi-auto first. So what I'm gonna do is start in semi. All right, to start programming, we're just gonna plug our battery in. It's a little 7.4. We hear our beep, and I have it on safe when I start up so that the MOSFET uh, realizes it's on safe. It's something that's mentioned in the manual. So I'm gonna to go to semi, and we're gonna program semi first. And to do the full auto, it's kind of the reverse. I'll show you that in a second here. You start on semi, and you have to move the selector back and forth pretty quickly. This one being stiff is not helpful so it can take a couple of tries with this particular gearbox. The green indicator here, which you can see the LED just a little bit up in the gearbox there, so I'm gonna keep the camera as best angled here as I can, represents the firing mode. 
And to go between different modes, we're simply going to move the selector between auto and semi each time. That'll take us to the next setting, which is active braking. It comes on three stock, which is great. I kind of like to leave it there actually because it's right in the middle. You can go any from, anywhere from off to five, five being the most powerful active braking. The next setting is pre-cocking, which is tough to see, but it's a yellow LED there. It's off to start with, but you've got eight settings you can go between there. The next setting is the binary trigger, and that goes between purple and turquoise. It's currently off because it's not beeping, but that is an option. You just pull the trigger each time you want to change a setting. So for these binary settings, it's on and off. Just pull it once, it'll turn it on. Pull it again, it'll turn it off. Uh, for any of the other settings, every time you pull the trigger, it'll cycle to the next one. So if you're on a three round burst, you pull the trigger, it'll be four round, pull it again, it'll be five round and so on. And it'll cycle back, loop back around to the off setting and then so on. The next setting is our two stage trigger, which is for things like your AUG and that kind of orientation. So if you wanna have options like semi burst, semi auto and burst auto, how that works is you pull the trigger about halfway for the first and fully pull the trigger for the second. So it's kind of an interesting feature. Next setting we have is trigger sensitivity. It'll come stock at three, but I went ahead and set it up to five just to see how sensitive it can get. And this is essentially your length of pull on your trigger. It can be really, really short. Like we're talking about a millimeter or two. You just barely tap it and it shoots, which is really, really great. So I'm gonna leave it there at five because I like that. Next one is rate of fire reduction. We don't really want that because this isn't the fastest gun in the world, but I probably will run it on a big fat 11.1. So it will be fairly snappy. The next setting is DMR mode. What this does is puts a delay between semi-auto shots, anywhere from a quarter second all the way up to three seconds. Our LiPo alarm, I'm gonna leave that turned on so you hear it beeping. So that indicates when your LiPo battery is getting low. That is definitely something good to have turned on. Next setting is our DSG. And this is not a DSG, it's a single sector gear. So I'm gonna leave that turned off. And last setting, is the master reset. You'll hold the trigger down for two seconds to reset all your settings to the factory defaults. When I hit the selector again, we leave programming mode and then we go straight back to the shooting mode. Let's go ahead and do a test shoot here. This is the biggest battery I own. It's 11.1, uh, 35 to 70C, 4,000 milliamp hour. It's a pretty hefty battery. I usually use it for DMRs and such with full stocks, but a gun like this with a slower, torquier motor, uh, I do like to use it on this as well because it does have a full stock. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And I should have had it on uh, safe there, but I'll have put it on safe, now it's semi. Active braking. Comes preset a little bit and then full auto. Reasonably fast. Definitely if I put any kind of other motor in there, it'd be a lot faster, but the stock Sima motor, it does all right for the spring that's in there. Something I like to do with every MOSFET install and review in the last section here is to try something really odd. Maybe some settings on semi and full auto that most people probably wouldn't do, but just for fun to see what happens. So I'm gonna start by programming the semi-auto mode. Our semi-auto is set to semi right now. So let's go ahead and make it binary. Let's go ahead and program full auto. It's currently our auto setting is of course set to auto. Let's go ahead and do like a fire mode there. Let's do, do a four round burst. Active braking, I'm still gonna leave on three because I like it. Pre-cocking, sure, let's do six. Binary, we've already got that set to semi. Two stage trigger, I'm gonna leave turned off for this one. I might try that a little bit later because this seems kind of interesting, but that's something you probably more use on like an AUG or something along those lines. Might be interesting on an M4 later on. Trigger sensitivity, I'm leaving on five because it's awesome. Rate of fire reduction, let's put it on four just to see what happens with this big old 11.1 volt. DMR mode, I'm going to leave off. LiPo alarm stays on, dual sector gear, because it's a single sector I'm not gonna worry about. Master reset, skip, and programmed. So let's go ahead and try this and see how it feels. Let's try the binary trigger, which I have set to semi here, so I'll pull the trigger, and then let off the trigger and it'll shoot again. And it sounded like it beeped at me there, so if I, it's interesting, I pull the trigger, wait, 
And it looks like it seems like there's a timeout function, which is actually interesting. Which I actually really like that functionality. If you hold the trigger super long and you don't have to shoot that second round, that is a really nice safety feature. I really like that. You can still get that almost full auto rate of fire there with that binary trigger. It's rather fun. Let's try the full auto mode here. So we had it set to four round burst with a really, really slow rate of fire and a little bit of pre-cocking. So let's go ahead and shoot and see what happens. Pretty consistent, really slow rate of fire with that rate of fire reduction. And I'm looking at the piston and it looks like there's a little bit of pre-cocking going on, which is great. I have to say, I'm always very impressed by Perrin's products. Every time I install one, they work very consistently. They're easy to set up. They've got all the functionality I really want. And they just seem to work really well. I like the quality materials they use. They're all sourced from reputable places. And side note, the heat shrink rocks that comes with these, which by the way, it's 3M. So really, really cool. I definitely can recommend the version 2 hybrid. I had a really great time installing it in my Sima M16 here. It works flawlessly and I have not had a single issue with it at all. Really, really great products, and I am very, very impressed by Perrin. Big thanks to Perrin over in Poland for sending this over and the other MOSFETs. They do one heck of a job, and I love their stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Look forward to more MOSFET reviews in the future. Take care.